This next one, I'm going to give you a few minutes to think about this one. And it's funny because it's a, um, it's a property that, I don't think it sounds strange, but I've become a little obsessed with it over the last couple of months. When I say the angle in a semicircle, do you recognize this property? Do you know what this means? If you don't, it's okay. I'll just show it to you. But I, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So um, draw a rough circle for me, um, and you can see how big it is on my page. I just don't want to make it too small, and it doesn't have to be an exact circle. I'm not expecting you to get a pair of compasses out, but it needs to look vaguely circular. Otherwise, you won't see what's going on. Okay. This property is called the angle in a semicircle because if you take your circle and then just slice it in half any way you like, right? So I'm gonna find a spot, and then I'm gonna draw a diameter. Okay, that looks, that looks like a diameter. Yep. Okay. Now what's great is, if you draw this diameter and now find any point on the circumference, just literally randomly pick a point on the circumference. Um, I'm going to put, put one up here. Okay. If you've got a diameter, which gives you two semicircles, and then you just pick any point on the diameter, um, look up for a second as I draw this bit and then you're going to draw it too. Watch what happens when I make what we call the angle in a semicircle. There we go. Um, and maybe uh, once you draw your own one, which I presume is going to be in a different spot, right? You might notice there's something in common between my angle and your angle. It's a special angle. How big does it look? Uh, 90 degrees. It looks pretty right angled to me, right? And in fact it is. Um, if you've got uh, the, the diameter there, Whichever angle you try and make on the circumference, and I'll make a few more now just to, to show you it always works, right? Here's another one over here, like so, another right angle. Let me draw like a weird one, just a small one over here. Yeah, right angle. They're all right angles, okay? So the angle in a semicircle is always 90 degrees. Now, this is a really fantastic property because not only is it um, true, its converse is also true. Now, I'm going to give you a moment just to try and prove that if you know, I'll get rid of the other ones here. Let's just go with a simple diagram like so. I want you to try and prove in any way that you like, and I promise it's actually pretty easy. Um, I'll even give you a clue, which is um, draw in the center somewhere because the diameter has to go through the center, right? Let me give you a couple of minutes just on your own to see if you can work out how might you prove that this angle up in the corner is 90 degrees. I'll give you a moment and then I will, um, I'll show you a really quick proof, okay? Have a go. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tricky when, like this is one of the, the hard parts about deductive geometry, I, I remember, is that when you look at something, if you stare at it and don't see it immediately, Unlike, say, in algebra, where you're like, I don't know, I'll just expand some stuff, or I'll just, you know, um, start cancelling things wherever I can. Unlike that, with geometry, I feel like sometimes you kind of need an insight, like a spark, and then once you see it, I mean, you saw it with this previous question, right? You're like, oh, I see what's going on, and then the rest of it became obvious. When you don't see it, you're like, oh, where do I go, okay? So, I will, I will give you a nudge, because it's, it's not too challenging, right? Um, once you know what to do with it. I'm going to draw in an extra radius here, like so. Now, one of the great things that happens in a circle is because you've got radii going everywhere, you've got lots of equal lengths and lots of equal angles. So if, for example, you look up the top here, I've got an isosceles triangle. So if I looked at its angles, like if I called this alpha, for instance, there's another angle that's alpha. Which one is it? Um the one top right. Top right, fantastic. So it's this one here, right? Yep. But this is not the only isosceles triangle that I've made, right? There's also the, the sort of obtuse uh, isosceles triangle, so it's, it's sort of equal to this side, right? Now again, you've got these two angles that are equal. If I call, um, say, this one beta in the corner, where's the other beta? Um, next to alpha. Very good. Yeah, up the top, next to alpha. Okay, so that's beta there. Now, can you see between my alphas and my betas, I have filled in every angle in this triangle. Do you see that? And so what I can say is, oh, um, if you put together all the angles, you'll get two alpha plus two beta. But what's the angle sum of a triangle? 360. Oh, hold on, a triangle? Oh no, 180. 180. <laughs> that's okay. I tricked you because we were looking at quadrilaterals just now, so you're in quadrilateral mode. That's totally fine. That's right. So, so we've got 180, but can you see what I can do here? I can just divide through by 2, 
and that gives me the alpha plus beta that's in the corner. Yeah, that's right, that's the 90 degrees, okay. Now, this obviously is not a vector proof, okay? But we're going to use vectors to prove what's called the converse. Um, have you done, you've done nature of proof, haven't you? Yeah, we've done nature yeah. of proof. Yeah, so if you remember, um, a converse is, if you know that A implies B, the converse is the other way around, right? Yeah. So B implies a, this, this, this thing here is the converse, okay? So what I'm saying is, we just proved that if you've got a diameter, then um, you have to get a right angle, right? So the converse with that would be, if you've got a right angle, you, you must have the diameter, okay? So we're gonna prove this, we're gonna use vectors to do it. It's a really clever proof. Uh, I didn't make it up myself. Almost all the clever things that I've ever done in maths, someone else showed me first, um, but I wanna share it with you now, so then you can feel clever as well. So what I need you to do is draw me another circle, okay? Now, with your second circle, you might look at this and you might say, Mr. Wood, that doesn't look like a semicircle to me. And that's true. I've deliberately drawn it to not look like a semicircle because one of the dangerous things that happens when you're doing a geometry proof is things can look like something and you can kind of fool yourself into using logic that's not real because the diagram looks like it, right? So I've deliberately drawn something that's not a semicircle. And um, what I want to say is, let's imagine there's some random chord, AB, and what I want to prove is that it is the diameter. I don't know that it's the diameter, and that's why I've drawn it looking weird, okay? But what I do know is, it's some random chord such that if I find this other point P on the circumference, I get a right angle. Now again, you're going to say to me, that doesn't look like a right angle. Um, and the whole point is, I don't want to rely on the diagram looking like that in order to do my proof, okay? So, AB, random chord, P, somewhere on the circumference such that um, APB, APB, I know that that's 90 degrees. So you might say that's, that's given. And then the last construction that I want to put on here is to say, okay, let's call this point in the middle the midpoint of AB. Now, remember, what I'm aiming toward is that AB is the diameter. So if AB is the diameter, then what's special about the midpoint of the diameter? What, what is that point? That's the middle of the circle. Yeah, very good. I want to prove that M is the center. Okay, so I've actually just noticed I've not drawn it very well, so I think I need to move it over a little bit. Let me just make it a little more looking like a midpoint. I think that's a, that's a bit healthier. Okay, fantastic. So, I've got all the pieces of the puzzle, and now let's go, let's go vectors on this, okay? Now, uh, let's just put some arbitrary things on here. So, if I start from my midpoint, right, imagine that's a bit like my origin. If I go from the midpoint to this capital A point over here, Let's call that vector A. Now, knowing that that's the midpoint, right? What does that tell you about going from the midpoint again? What, what vector would it be if I went to, instead of going to A, what if I went to B? What's the relationship between those two? Well, their, their magnitudes are the same. Magnitudes the same? Say that at last bit again. Um, the magnitudes are the same, but they've got different directions, and they're the equal vectors because they're the radius of the circle. Okay, fantastic. So I know, <laughs> just be careful, um, I can't say radius oh, just yet. Okay. That's, that's right, that's what I'm trying to get to, but, 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 that's okay. Because it's still a midpoint, right? Exactly as you said, the magnitudes are identical, it's just the direction's different. Not only is the direction different, it's different in a very specific way. Can you be more um, detailed for me? What, what difference is there? Uh, like, look, they're, they're kind of going like this, right? What does that tell you? That they're 180 degrees, like... Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not just different, they are in fact opposite. So in terms of the vectors, I can actually say that's, that's the negative version of A. Do you, do you remember that's how we say, go in the opposite direction, okay? Yeah. All right, now I've got, I've got A and I've got negative A. The last thing I've got here is to get to that point on the circumference, um, P, right? So this is a different vector, okay? Let's call this, I guess because I'm going to capital P, let's call this vector little p, all right? Yeah. 